name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. Very good morning uh, to you all. I'm joined in chapel this morning by members of Board 2 and Board 1, um, and by a very um, elite uh, choir, members from uh, Form 4, members of the choir from Form 4, uh, from Form 4, are providing our music this morning. Thank you to them in advance. Uh, we continue our Easter celebration. This is uh, getting towards the end of Easter now, and on Thursday of this week, we shall have kept 40 days, which will mean we shall celebrate the Ascension. But for now, we're thinking about the gift that has been given to us, the gift of love, uh, the love of uh, Christ, which exists amongst us as friends of his. But first, as we come together, let us call to mind our sins, asking for God's forgiveness and thinking about those times when we have failed to love each other as he loves us. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Gloria is sung for us. <coughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Our readers this morning are Amira and Doddy. A reading from the Act of the Apostles. As Peter reached, the house Cornelius went out to meet him, now at his feet and prostrated himself. But Peter helped him up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man after all. Then Peter adjusted them. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all his listeners. Jewish believers who would accompany Peter were all astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit should be poured out on the pagans too, since they could hear them speaking strange languages and proclaiming the greatness of God. Peter himself then said, Could anyone refuse the water of baptism to these people? Now they have received the Holy Spirit just as much as we have. 
He then gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, they begged him to stay on for some, for some days. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God, and everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The choir are going to sing for us uh, the Alleluia, which comes before the gospel. So the choir will sing the Alleluia. said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him and we shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the father will give you anything you ask him in my name. What I command you is to love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I was looking at the programme for today um, and of course I saw chapel and thought that's very exciting. I know they'll be thrilled to be there. Um, and I looked at the readings for today and it said love one another. And then I saw axe throwing um, for the rest of the day. I was beginning to think, how can I possibly tie together loving one another and axe throwing? I presume you're not throwing axes at each other later. That's that's not going to happen, is it? I'm not quite sure where you're throwing them. I'm certainly going to make sure I'm not in the vicinity. Um, but uh, I'm sure you will enjoy uh, letting off steam, uh, throwing axes at things. Um, today's readings are building up to a point in the church's year when uh, Jesus returns to heaven and the disciples are sent out to be his witnesses, witnesses to that love which he has talked about. 
Um, and today, by as you will know from listening very carefully on Friday, uh, is the day on which Heathfield opened in 1899. This is the very day. So it's all very exciting. Uh, we've got Ascension Day, which is the dedication of the chapel. We've got Founders Day. We've got the opening of the school. We've got axe throwing. And we're invited to love one another. So not a very busy day at all. But I hope that uh, you can find time in the busyness of today to think what it means to love one another. Sounds really easy. It sounds as if you just got to be friends with people. Sounds as if you can just get away with being nice. Um, and that's part of it, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that's a really important part of what loving one another means, trying to do your best by the other person. But I'm, one of my favorite lines uh, from the readings today came in the first reading, which Amira read, um, which said, God has no favorites. Good thing to think about that. God has no favourites. He treats everyone exactly the same. Now, it could be that you imagine him to be some hard taskmaster, someone who lays down the law and says, you can't do this and you can't do that. Um, and if you fail, then somehow you will be shunned. You will be cast out. You will no longer be in the circle of God's love. But that's not what Peter realised. Peter realised that God has no favourites. In other words, everyone is treated exactly the same, no matter who you are, where you're from, what you look like, uh, whatever your background, whatever goes on in your head, <clears throat> God loves you exactly the same as anyone else. He loves you as much as he loves the greatest saint. He loves you as much as he loves the greatest sinner. There is no difference. God has no favourites. But what about you? If we're called to love one another as God loves us, do you have favourites? Do you have people that you stick close to because they make you feel safe or secure? Do you have people who are nice to you and therefore you keep them close because you know you're going to be treated well? And equally, are there people you stay away from? Are there people you don't like? It's not a crime not to like someone. Uh, but there might be people who you find it really difficult to get on with. People you keep at a distance. People who may have done you wrong. Or people you'd like to do wrong to. People you'd like to throw axes at. Well, don't do that, please. Are there people like that? Yes, of course. Because we are human beings, we struggle not to have favourites. Teachers do it all the time. They absolutely bend over backwards to make sure that they don't treat any child in their class differently. But it's not always easy because the children in front of them might behave very differently or they might work very differently. And sometimes we struggle. I think we'll be honest and say it's a struggle, but we do our best not to have favourites. But we are all called to treat one another exactly the same, to love one another. And that doesn't mean just feeling nice and gushy and warm and romantic and sentimental about them. It just doesn't mean liking the people that we like. It means trying to walk in their shoes, seeing things from their perspective, listening to them, not just hearing them speak, but actually listening to what they're saying. Sometimes even bending over backwards to do the right thing by someone we find it difficult to like. That's what loving one another means. And it's tough, but it's what we are called to do. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus loved his disciples. He loves each one of us. He sacrificed himself. That's the extent to which he was prepared to show how much he loved. No one's inviting you to sacrifice yourself. But God is calling all of us to treat one another exactly the same, with no favoritism. And to treat even those we find it difficult to like <clears throat> with the same love that we deal with those we find it easy to like. Think about it today. In all the activities you do, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever your background, whatever, your, whatever you look like, whatever you think in your head, spare a moment to think, what does loving someone else mean for me? Because Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. We're going to say together the creed in the blue books, the creed. We believe 
in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, for the world, for each other and for ourselves. Let us pray. As we think about the love that God has shown to us, we pray for the gift and the grace to love one another. We pray for those who are closest to us, our families and friends, and all whom we hold close. And we pray too for those we try to keep at a distance, those we find it difficult to like. As we think of the love given to us, may we try to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, for all the nations, for their leaders and their peoples, and for peace amongst nations. We pray for those nations that are struggling, particularly at this time of pandemic for those who are suffering as a result of a lack of care or a lack of facilities or a lack of medical assistance. Pray too for our own nation, for Her Majesty the Queen, for those who represent us in Parliament and on our local councils and all whose decisions affect our daily lives. In all things, may they have wisdom and seek the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our school, giving thanks for its foundation, for the years that have passed and the years that lie ahead. We pray for all those who support us in our work here for the staff and governors, for our parents and the members of the Old Girls Fellowship. May we cherish what we have been given and use it for the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for all who are sick in hospital or at home, and those who care for them. We pray for those within our local community who are known to us, and all who have been linked with our life here at school, for our local care homes and hospices. As we hold them in our hearts, may they know God's healing and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us offer to God our own prayers and the prayer of all our hearts that we may love one another as he loves us.
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wondered if anyone noticed that I've exchanged a piece with them. Um, fabulous. Uh, we have two treats today. Uh, later on in our service during communion, I, I probably won't announce it, Miss Kong, um, but at the time of communion, the choir are going to sing um, the old Josh Groban, Groban favourite, You Raise Me Up. That'll be a treat uh, for all of us. Um, and now our hymn, which I'm sorry to say has to be recorded, uh, but nevertheless will be one you can hum along to silently. Can, can you hum silently? I think you probably can. Um, is All Creatures of Our God and King.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together in the words Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father and he will send you another advocate to abide with you forever. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before you go off and throw axes, um, enormous thanks <coughs> to Amira and to Doddy uh, for reading so beautifully, uh, to Forms 1 and 2, such as they are, and to staff for being here in chapel with me, to Lily, of course, who is my right-hand woman. Um, <coughs> but to the members of the choir, you have just done a fantastic thing, and I am enormously grateful. Um, and because it's the day on which Heathfield founded, we're thinking about former headmistresses, and I just have to send the link of you singing You Raise Me Up to a former headmistress, uh, someone who might live in Oxford, because she will be absolutely thrilled to hear that. So thank you for bringing together so many strands by your singing um, and particular of that particular anthem, but fabulous. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and um, <clears throat> do, do what you must in love. Would you like to stand for the blessing, please? <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.